Is domestic first class worth it on United Airlines? Today I'm flying from Las Vegas to Los Angeles in United first class. I told some jokes about roller coasters at the Wise Guys Comedy Club in Vegas the night before, so I was in a great mood arriving at the Harry Reid International Airport. Welcome to Las Vegas Airport. It's a beautiful morning here with the views over the mountains. Let's get ourselves checked in at United right there behind me. I checked in the main compartment of my Osprey backpack at the counter. There was literally no line at the Premier Access counter. Very good experience. Now let's go find the security checkpoint. Our flight today will take around 40 minutes. I paid for this trip myself so that you get a travel video that's authentic and not sponsored by anyone. Welcome to my channel, Marcus Travels. That must have been the quickest TSA procedure that I've ever gone through. Las Vegas airport is really impressing me so far. Now let's go and find the lounge. This is Vegas, so there are slot machines everywhere, even here at the airport. I came out net positive on the gambling here as well, just like I did at Resorts World. So I'm leaving the city with a great impression. At the airport, I have access to the United Club lounge. Not because of the first class ticket, but because of my star gold status. A first class ticket is generally not enough to get you into lounges on domestic flights in the US. When booking, I was offered to buy access to the United Club for $50. If you want to skip straight to the boarding or any other part of the video, use the chapter markings on the timeline. One small thing that could be improved at Las Vegas airport is the signage. It does clearly say lounges at Echo 2 this way, but it doesn't say which ones are there. I might be walking in the wrong direction. There are plenty of places to charge your devices. They have regular power outlets as well as these things which look like USB ports that have not been installed correctly. And there's ads like this only in Las Vegas. Here is some leftover merch from the Formula One race that took place in Las Vegas a month prior to my visit. There is also a vending machine for cake. I gotta say, this is a fun airport. And check out this thing. It's a gambling room where smoking is allowed. I understand that's important to many casino patrons. Yep, that was the wrong place. The United Club is in the Delta Terminal. As I listen back to these clips, I realized that there's music playing in the terminal almost all the time. That's a nice touch, but I cannot include the music in my video because of copyright. Now we're back to the intersection where I was before where I took the wrong turn towards the lounge. Going down, there are posters about Las Vegas. I really like these kinds of things. They add a bit of personality to the airport. There is also a giant rabbit sculpture. For the record, I did not climb it. To get to the Delta gates, there's a train in a tunnel. I overheard a few people having a conversation. One asked, have you ever been on a train before? And the other person said, yes, once. As a person who lives in Switzerland and who rides the train almost every day, this is a fascinating perspective. Especially since this train ride only lasts 40 seconds. There's a Hudson News store here, powered by Amazon technology with no cashiers. As the sign says, just walk out. I really love these little details like these aircraft, which are there to deter you from sliding down the center of the escalator. They add a lot. This is cool. The views from the terminal are nice. And this Christmas tree is really very tempting. Luckily, it is cordoned off. Finally, the sign to the United Club Lounge. But not before we pass through another couple dozen slot machines, as well as some great shopping opportunities. Access to the United Club Lounge is primarily via elevator for some reason. The lounge has workspaces along the wall and plenty of comfortable seating. But what really impressed me, compared to my previous United Club experiences, is the food. There's a cereal bar by the entrance with many different types of milk. They have hot breakfast items and many of these were actually really good. They also have more charcuterie type items as well as soup. The selection of drinks is solid. For self-service, they got juice, water and hot drinks. And there is a Coke freestyle machine. 
This is where they have all kinds of different Coke products and you can mix and match as you wish. The only problem with the Coke Freestyle machine was that it sprayed all over my hand. Somebody should either unclog or realign the nozzle. Welcome to the United Club here at Las Vegas Airport. For a United Club, I think it's pretty nice. Specifically because they have more than just plastic and paper cutlery and plates. They actually have real mugs for the coffee and real plates for the food. The glasses are still plastic cups though for some inexplicable reason. The lounge has in theory nice views over the action outside but those curtains are pulled down very far I guess to keep out most of the light but it also means that we have the limited visibility of what's happening beyond those windows. For more adult beverages there is a bar. I made sure to film most of this when the staff wasn't there. And this reminds me that there's one thing I love about traveling in the United States. In Europe and in the Middle East, I have been asked more than once to not film in the lounge. But here in Las Vegas, as well as at LAX the next day, the staff engaged with me. They asked about my YouTube channel, and the barman talked about his ideas for his YouTube channel. One of the other staff members told me about her son's channel. And as a more experienced content creator, I shared some of my best tips about monetization on YouTube. I do hope that the barman does start his truck renovation channel. By the way, if you're watching this, say hi in the comments. And a big thank you for this special cocktail that you prepared for me. Let's try a porn star martini here at the United Club. Um, cheers. Drinking and filming at the same time is not for me. <laughs> Let's never do that again. Not because of the booze, because of the spillage. Let's leave the lounge and head toward our gate. Past a cupcake vending machine, because why not? Boarding here at gate Delta 51 should start in about 15 minutes time. I'm looking forward to this short hop over to Los <coughs> Angeles. As we're getting ready to board, I gotta say this is a good airport. There's daylight. There's quirky things. People are actually enjoying themselves here. The only reason I point that out specifically is that my experience with US airports over the past 20 years has been mostly negative. We need more airports like this. At boarding, I get an email from United Airlines. And this reminds me they sent out quite a few emails before and during the trip. In one of them, they changed the schedule, but it was only by a few minutes. I'm happy that United indicates both the old time and the new time, unlike certain Scandinavian airlines I have flown recently. Another thing I like is that United Airlines did not charge me for selecting a seat. On this aircraft, the seat layout is one plus two. Welcome aboard United Airlines and first class. I made myself comfortable here in seat number one, Alpha. Even though we are in first class, what you get here is not a lie flat bed or anything like that. On most US domestic flights, first class means a big recliner. There is more space here than in the economy cabin, which is in a two plus two configuration. And there's also more space here than what they call business class on intra-European routes. On those products, for example, on Lufthansa or Swiss, you will just get an economy seat with the middle seat blocked. In this United First seat, you get more legroom, you get a wider seat and more recline. But there are limitations. This is a regional jet, an Embraer 175 specifically. This means that the overhead bins are tiny. I can fit my day pack and my coat in here, but anything bigger would not fit. We'll have a closer look at the seat features after takeoff. What a beautiful day for flying with sun and bright blue skies. The airport is just next to the Las Vegas Strip, and we get an amazing view of all the major resorts as we take off. There's the high roller observation wheel too, as well as the sphere. 
What a great airport Las Vegas has, and the views don't stop there. Before long, we're up over the desert mountains. This is just beautiful. On this trip, I had the opportunity to fly over them four times, and they never cease to impress me. There is a power outlet at the seat, but no in-flight entertainment screen. In the armrest, there is a tray table that I used to knock my camera around. Luckily, my camera has an aftermarket small rig cage, which is an aluminum brace that protects it from my clumsiness. But what kind of equipment should I get in order to figure out how to put the tray table back in the armrest? As I was clearly struggling with this, the flight attendant said that I'm not the only passenger who has problems. Maybe she was just being nice. The tray table can be used either in full or half mode. The onboard service begins with drinks. No hot towels, nothing like that. If you have an international first-class product in mind, you need to adjust your expectations down. With the drink, I get a couple of strop waffles, and that's literally it. There was no meal service on this flight, and I knew this when booking, but there could have been. In the first-class cabin, which had four rows, there were three flight attendants. Firstly, there was a lady who was in training. She did all the work, and she did a great job. Secondly, there was a trainer who guided her through all the procedures. She could have helped out with the service because she too was a flight attendant. And then, thirdly, there was a male flight attendant. I understand that he was supposed to be in the back working the economy section, but instead he was up in the front just chatting with his colleagues for most of the flight. This is not a criticism of any of the individuals, but of United's processes. I have flown similar flights on regional jets, on Lufthansa, for example, between Frankfurt and Basel, which is also a 40-minute flight, and they are able to serve a meal in business class. We arrive on time at LAX, and I'm heading for the baggage claim. I get an email from United Airlines telling me which baggage belt to use. I find this helpful. Maybe they could have skipped one or two of the other emails that I got during and before the trip, but overall communication worked really well. I pick up the main compartment of my beloved Osprey backpack, and it is in great condition, which may be surprising because United breaks guitars. If you haven't seen that music video about baggage handling at United, check it out. I have a link to it in the description below. This United flight is over, and it was certainly a big old mixed bag of experiences. The highlights include the efficient handling at the Las Vegas airport, from check-in to security to transfer to the Delta gates. That all went really, really nicely. The other highlight was the above-average United club, but there is also a major area of improvement, and that is the service on board. The fact that you only get a drink and a cookie on this so-called first-class flight is pretty pathetic. I remember a flight that took on Emirates from Dubai to Muscat, also 40 minutes, just like the one that I just left. This was a wide-body aircraft, and they were able to serve a full breakfast to all the passengers, including economy class, on that 40 minutes flight. If their crew used their time more productively than just chatting with each other, they would have been able to serve a full meal, at least in first class. For an alternative flight, click or tap the screen right here. That's my full experience with JSX, the semi-private jet company that I took in the opposite direction a few days earlier. Thank you very much for watching Marcus Travels today, and I will see you in the next video.